Hey guys, Ricky from Proton Global Media Group here in Florida, and we are systems integrators as well as product seeders and testers for different technology. And uh, wanted to share with you some of the new Black Magic Design uh, gear, really specifically geared towards churches and houses of worship in, in this in this type of review. Um, we're actually here at my own church, Now Church, here in Florida, and uh, we use a lot of Black Magic products. I'll actually get into the gear list here uh, later on in our in our last segment, um, so you can kind of see what we use. We're constantly upgrading and, and changing things here. Um, but we test a lot of stuff, and, and this is the new Blackmagic Ursa broadcast. And uh, let me give you a little backstory. Some of you may have seen about four years ago, we did uh, the review for Blackmagic um, Studio Camera HD. And um, so much great response on that video, and, and so many questions from all of you around the world and, and around the country. And really, there was, a, there was some shortfalls on that camera. And really, over time, it kind of it, it proved out because everybody had the same kind of questions. First off was, what lens do we use for that camera? How do we use it in our church? Well, the problem was, first of all, the dynamic range on that camera wasn't great. So uh, if you didn't have adequate broadcast style lighting, you would have to gain up the camera in order to get an adequate light level out of it. And that would uh, cause a lot of grain in the, in, in, in the imagery, especially in the blacks. So it wasn't great. Um, but it was, it was usable. We used it for, for a, a time. Of course, we had a, we had a budget. We had a, some goals, and we had to kind of use it. And, and it did well for us for a time. But really, I think Blackmagic uh, upgraded things, and they've, they've really been listening to their clients and their customers and, and integrators and things about how they can make their products better. And uh, so the other thing with the Studio Camera 2 back then was um, the lens options, it was an MFT mount. So if you wanted to uh, use a B4 uh, lens on it, then you have to use an adapter. And once again, because of the dynam dynamic range, it didn't do great. Um, but those of you who are using the, the photography style lenses, they would order from the big box stores. You would, you know, oh, let me get a, a, a Studio HD camera or Studio 4K, and let me get a zoom and focus length controller, and let me get one of the lenses that, that uh, allow zoom and focus. Well, the problem was those lenses aren't par focal. So the moment you start zooming on those lenses is the moment you have to set your focus. So it's, it's literally impossible to be able to do that at the same time uh, with any accuracy. So uh, I think churches really, uh, really were crying out for a B4 lens mount. And sure enough, that's what Blackmagic did here four years later. This is a, uh, a two-third inch uh, native sensor. So it's a new sensor to Blackmagic. It's, it's very similar quality to the Blackmagic uh, Ursa, um, Ursa Mini Pro. And we have one of those as well. And of course, you might have uh, read our review about that. But uh, this guy has a, it's a it's a 4K sensor. It is a, a two-third inch B4 sensor, so you can stick an, an SD B4 lens. Maybe maybe you're a church who uh, you have some S, old SD cameras, but you still have a decent Canon and a Fujinon lens on it, and you have maybe some real studio zoom and focus controls. Well, the good thing about this is you can start your 4K or HD workflow by getting the camera, getting the ATEM stuff around it, and maybe just start with your SD lens you have now. We've tested it with SD lenses. It's a decent picture, especially those who are upgrading from SD. It actually gets the job done. But uh, if you can, starting out or, or, or maybe over time, getting an HD lens uh, is going to be a great option. And of course, Ultra HD eventually, as that comes down in price and as, that, uh, as the industry kind of catches up with lenses, hopefully that'll be something you can stick on at the end. But at least having this camera, you get the 4K sensor and you have all the bells and whistles you need to act as a true studio camera. So uh, one thing with studio stuff is even the tally light. And this is the optional uh, Ursa Studio Viewfinder. Uh, it is a great addition to the, to the Ursa broadcast. Uh, this tally light, and, and some of you may be asking because it's green right now. Well, that means it's on the preview source of the ATEM switcher. So uh, when it's on the preview, it actually kind of alerts your volunteers, your camera operators, you know, all right, guys, we're about to be on, so we're green. And then when you're red, of course, that means you're on the program monitor and that means you're live. So this changes colors as well as if you don't have the studio viewfinder, maybe you're using a, an on-camera LCD or something like that, uh, or you could use this fold-out monitor. This does actually, the, the fold-out monitor does have uh, an outline of green when you're on preview mode or if you're on the program, then it'll show you red. So that's kind of a cool thing, I think, for uh, of just a workflow for, for volunteer camera operators or professional camera operators. in house of worship, it's a great thing. Uh, the sensor uh, is, is is really good, it's performing well. On a B4 HD lens or on an SD lens, you get the whole length of the zoom. So if you remember, if you, if you use an adapter on the uh, studio cameras with a B and stuck a B4 lens on it, you would have this vignetting because it would have to get past that sensor. 
Well, there's no vignetting, there's no softness on the edges uh, in, in all of our tests. You can actually have the whole length of the zoom, even going down to F1.7 or F1.5, whatever your lowest uh, f-stop is, it'll allow you to do that and, and you can really get a good bright image out of it. So those working on low light, you can just uh, basically uh, iris this thing and open it up full wide and, and have a great looking image. Um, so that's something that's a big plus. Uh, having this real studio zoom and focus control capabilities uh, using these B4 lenses is also a great thing. If you're using this also remotely, maybe your church who you have a couple cameras on sticks on tripods, but you maybe have like an, a shoulder mount camera and you're wanting to replace that. Well, this camera also has a, an optional uh, uh, viewfinder. It's an Ursa viewfinder that actually used for ENG work and shoulder mounts type stuff. So if you're roving, you can actually use you know, that viewfinder as well and, and add that. So just a great thing all around the, the, what they've done to this sensor, what they've done to the, the different buttons and things. You really won't use this stuff if you're using an ATEM switcher. Of course, you're, you're used to having the template where you just have uh, you know, your switcher template, you open it up and all the cameras, all the colors, all the uh, tallies and everything line up and, and sync up to the last way you had it. Maybe you, your graphics or something load in. But, uh, but with this camera, uh, if you're using this in the ENG world or whatever, and you're, you're, you're taking this out and about, you've got all these buttons, you've got ND filters, you've got all these things, you've got a battery, optional battery pack you can put on there. So this camera really, whether in, in the in this broadcast world, whether you're in studio or your ENG, the Ursa Broadcast is a great product and really has, has come leaps and bounds from where Blackmagic started with the, with the studio camera. So we're gonna go into now, uh, the, go into the control room type of stuff and see the new ATEM 4ME switcher as well as the new ATEM uh, 1ME advanced panel here. One of my favorite things about Blackmagic design products is they continually improve and, and get better as well as their network ability. Uh, and, and our recent upgrade here at Now Church, uh, we actually uh, had our control room is very tight for space. It's kind of tucked into a closet. It's very small and it gets very hot. So when we had our equipment rack in there, that of course generates heat and then of course you have the fan noise. So we decided to move our equipment rack in an electrical mechanical room across the building. Uh, and the beauty of Blackmagic stuff is it, it can all talk to each other, it can all be on the network. So our switcher is in on the equipment rack. We have the new ATEM 4ME Broadcast Studio 4K switcher. We have a couple of HyperDex to, to record, which we can actually control that via the, the ATEM uh, software. And then we also have the Smart Video Hub 20 by 20, which handles all of our camera feeds all around the campus. So uh, several of them go to all of our Blackmagic cameras and as the return feeds that bring camera control and tally information and all that kind of stuff to those. And then the others go for all of our campus TV. So it goes to the nursery, pastor's office, you know, lobby TV, sound booth, wherever we want monitors. And it's all controlled via the iPad app or via the, the Mac or PC app. Uh, so it's really easy to switch on the fly and to kind of route things the way you want it. So uh, with, the, with the switcher though, let's uh, focus on the switcher for a second. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Broadcast Studio 4K line, the Broadcast Studio is different from the Production Studio switchers. And the difference is it's 12G compatible, 12G SDI. So you have a lot more growing room as 12G becomes something that's more affordable and more standardized, then that, you're gonna have that option uh, ready when, when that's available. Uh, and, and those who have the money to do it now, you can do that, of course, right now if you want to do 12G. Uh, then the other thing is the, it's all SDI across the board. So those of you who are familiar with Blackmagic is pretty much always in the production studio stuff had at least one HDMI input, and then they've had at least their multi-viewers and maybe a program output of HDMI. Well, on the broadcast studio stuff, there is all SDI connectors. So there's 20 inputs, and there's several outputs, of course, with the auxes and things, but even the multi-viewers are SDIs. So you have to, we just adapted, we just used the new Blackmagic micro converters, so it's just like 30-something bucks to be able to convert that from SDI to HDMI to plug into our, into our TVs, into our monitors. So, you know, that's the thing, it's, it's, a, it's a great uh, investment uh, to be able to step up to something that's really hopefully future-proof here the next several years as things get more and more compatible. Uh, so that's our, that's our rack. And then moving on, the, at, we, we only have one cable going from, the, from our uh, rack in, in the other side of the building to our uh, advanced panel. So this is the new uh, ATEM 1ME advanced panel this thing is awesome. And if you were used to the old one, the old one was kind of boxy. It was kind of getting older and you can, it was kind of an old body style. The buttons didn't feel as good. It didn't have any dynamic labeling. This thing has really grown by leaps and bounds as well. And uh, so let's go over this. You have the preview bank here to get all your preview monitors. The biggest thing, my favorite feature is the customizable labeling here on not only the preview bank, but uh, the program bank here, as well as it does macros. So macros are right here, it lights up in blue, and you actually have the, the, the customizable macro labeling. So those of, our, those of you who are not familiar with macros, 
it's basically pushing one button that could do multiple things, and it's all pre-programmed. So macros are where things are going and things are headed, so you can really do uh, more with less. Uh, so that's the macro side of things. So that's all customizable labels. Then you got all the menus here. I won't go into a lot of the details because, of course, there's a lot of a lot of you guys want to get your hands on this, or maybe there's other reviews that go more in depth. But I just want to give you a, a rough overview. You got, your, of course, your downstream keyers here. You got your T-bar. Uh, really, it feels good. The buttons feel good. It's really, it's really rugged. And it's a very sleek kind of design. It feels good. Um, and then you got your, your toggle switches here. You can load graphics in here. You can set your ratios and all that type of stuff. And then you have your, your number pad. And then this is for more like a PTZ type head. So a lot of things now finally are compatible with the ATEM software where this can control the pan and tilt heads that are out there in, in some cases. Uh, and then you have all your you know, transitions and all that stuff there and your downstream keyers, like I said. So really, this is a great switcher. It's very sleek. It's very good quality. If you're using this in a, in a, in a production room, if you're using this in a mobile truck, you know, wherever you have this, this can go anywhere. And the beauty for us is one cable. You have one, it's power over ethernet. So this one cable brings all the data to the switcher, from the switcher to this, as well as uh, brings power to it because it's PoE. So we just have this guy in the control room on Sundays is for a broadcast. And then during the week, it's our recording studio for Pro Tools. So we actually just unplug this guy and put it in a cabinet. And that way, it's safe and secure until the next Sunday when we want it. So very versatile. You don't have to unplug, unplug everything here. It's just one cable, and it's PoE. And then, of course, like I said, we drop our SDIs for our multiviewers into that room as well. But our rack is totally in another room. And that's been a great thing, because everything's on the network. So I'm going to go over here in a minute. In this next segment, I'm going to end it by showing you some of the things we do with our, our, our Now Church workflow here, where we've used a lot of Blackmagic Black Magic design technology over the years, and we're constantly upgrading. So I want to give you kind of an insight of what our design looks like. So for Now Church, we have a really versatile design. We constantly upgrade to a lot of, and a lot of the newer Blackmagic type of gear. You know, we love it because it's budget friendly and it works well for volunteers. That's why Proton Global is installing it all over the country and all over the world uh, and really helping to influence people to, to, to really take a look at it because it's definitely grown and upgraded. And uh, we love some of the new features that, of course, we've gone over in this recent technology that, have, that has come out from Blackmagic. Um, but as for our now church design, our camera one is, a, uh, is, in, the, is in the back uh, center of the room, and that is a, uh, a Blackmagic Ursa uh, Mini Pro with a B4 adapter on it. And then during the week, we actually take the B4 adapter off of that and uh, stick on an EF lens mount, and we can shoot you know, type, uh, cinema type stuff and interviews, church news, all that kind of stuff. So it's very versatile for us. Uh, the camera two for us is the new Ursa broadcast that we showed you earlier. Uh, that also has a, a B4 HD lens on it. Our jib then is, uh, is one of our other cameras, which is a Micro Studio 4K. We actually use in set, well, I think we're using five Micro Studio 4K cameras. Reason why we love those, first of all, they're $12.95 uh, list price, and uh, they have, they're a lot of bang for the buck. Um, you know, they, they, they're very small, they're very versatile, and they're very good to put around the room at different locations. And, and we have one actually on our jib with a B4 adapter, because we're still trying to upgrade that one to a nurse broadcast here soon. But we're using it with a B4 adapter, B4 Magic, uh, with a with a uh, an, uh, a B4 uh, sorry yeah a B4 HD Canon lens that we have it's an old lens that we have on there and it gets the job done um, so that's something where we, we love that uh, for our uh, we have a, also a Micro Studio uh, on a uh, Ronin M stabilizer uh, from DJI so that is a total wireless camera. Uh, and it can go around and get some type steady cam type broadcast kind of looks because of course our music and our worship is definitely uh, what a lot of people know us for. Uh, and then we also have, we invented a track camera up in the ceiling which goes from the back of the room to the front of the room and that also is a micro studio 4K camera, completely wireless and it actually runs off a remote control car chassis actually, believe it or not. So we have a person, person in the back actually running that back and forth and, and uh, we just kind of gives a, an eagle eye view and gives us another angle with some movement. Uh, and then we uh, have a couple other micro static uh, mounted. And then we've uh, just recently upgraded to, we used to have GoPros, uh, and now we, uh, we rep and now Proton Global is now partner with Marshall. And so we have the new uh, Marshall cameras as well. So those of you who are interested, we can give you uh, some demos and stuff and, and show you kind of some of the things with Marshall where they're at, uh, which has been great as well, because those are great for POV type stuff. So on our instruments, over the drums, the keyboards, the guitars, the bass, all that kind of thing, uh, we have these, uh, these SDI 
uh, HD, 1080, 60 frames or 30 frames uh, Marshall cameras. So really good stuff. So we really, like I said, we, we, we have upgraded constantly. So whenever something comes out, like we literally just got rid of our uh, studio HD camera because we've had that for now four years. Uh, and we now upgraded to the Ursa broadcast. So it's definitely something where as we can, we just upgrade little by little, but because the Blackmagic workflow works so well together where you can you know, put this stuff in the ATEM system, you can control the colors and the irises and match the different lenses and different cameras. Our broadcast for Now Church has definitely, uh, that's why a lot of people love it and they've, and they've asked us why, how we do what we do and how we've been able to do it for the price we've done it for. And really the way the Blackmagic is affordable and I think also because it's easy for volunteers where we can save those templates. Uh, you know, somebody like me will come in, Proton Global, we, we do all these consulting things and, and design systems and integrate uh, for, for churches all over the country. And when we go in, we can set everything to the irises and set the, set the right lighting, set all the colors, match everything up with the lenses, and then we save that as a template. And then the beauty, beautiful thing is on Sunday morning, the volunteers or whoever, whatever staff member or whatever person is in charge of opening up for Sunday and getting all the gear turned on, you just literally you turn a boot up the computer, open up that ATEM template, and all the graphics, all the colors, all the irises, all the settings just snap back. So those of you who are maybe uh, have not uh, got, uh, gotten into the whole black magic design thing, uh, I think it's time that you might really, really want to consider it because it's not only affordable, but it's been working well in our workflow as a church and in churches all over the country who are looking to do something good quality but not spend a bunch of money. So if you have any questions and would like some information, uh, we are uh, really some of the most reputable uh, black magic design uh, resellers with, with, and, and also uh, really this, one of the most uh, experienced in integrating some really cool systems with different types of things. So uh, you can check us out at protonglobal.com. Contact us, message us, Facebook us, whatever. Call us. Love to hear from you all around the country, all around the world. And uh, we hope that you've enjoyed these, uh, this review and the other reviews that we do. And we appreciate you watching. Thanks so much.